yet. He's gonna leave. So funny story before I get started. So Matt shows up yesterday, and I'm gonna call everybody first names at my at our uh, booth, and he goes, "I'm your escort. Is that what it is? Handler. Handler. And I'm and I'm a DV, and he's gonna walk me around anywhere. And I'm like, oh, this poor guy. So he signed up to be a, a handler, and he was expecting it like a two star, three star, someone that could actually do something for him. And I'm like, you got me. And so we went and had beers. Uh, you know, I bought him a beer, we walked around, and I introduced him to people. And the thing about it is, is I wanted to make it be at least somewhat close uh, to being valuable for him in his career. And I can't do it with the generals, Ken. So what I'd like you all to do is to pull out your phones, and I'd like you to scan the QR code and send Matt a connection request. And I know I think he had 107 connections this morning. I checked before I came out of here. There's at least five, look, I'm a retired Sergeant Major, I'll get into this. False motivation is better than no motivation. So at least pretend you're taking your phone out. Please, I will come off this stage and come talk to all of you. So I expect him to at least have a couple hundred connection requests, it should be easy. And hint, we're gonna use this again later, all right? So please, scan the QR code, click connect, and let's you know, take care of Captain Stout. I know. So thanks, Matt. So, all right, hey everybody, uh, thanks for joining. I'm, I'm, I've got a lot of energy. I'm not gonna stay on this dot the whole time. Um, but let's talk about why you're here. You're here to talk to this guy, right? This guy, over there, I guess. Right, everybody wants to know what Sergeant Major Quinn has to say. Right, who wants to learn from an MI Sergeant Major? Who thinks the MI Sergeant Major got invited here? No, come on now. You guys are here because, well, some of you are told to be here, but the rest of you are here because, you know, these things. So you've got me at the New York Stock Exchange, you've got me on red carpets. On the top right, that's me teaching LinkedIn at LinkedIn. I don't work for LinkedIn. And in the bottom right, that's one of the most recent Air Force General Officer transition courses. So I do teach all the branches of service, all the generals and admirals. But I'm gonna ask you a question. What's the difference between these two guys? Thank you, I was worried the Air Force was not gonna answer. The beard, that's it? Come on, you can do better than that. Bigger smile, yeah, I'm kinda happy. You know, things turned out well. I make a lot more money. What else? I was waiting for someone to say that. I did put on a few pounds. I don't wake up at 6 a.m. to do fitness training anymore. I did it for 24 years. No, I don't have a bigger voice. I do, it does carry, but can I tell you the first thing that I said when I walked in here is I don't need a microphone. I'm an E9, right? Any chiefs in the audience would have said the same thing, I'm loud enough, right? So I told him back there, I'm gonna be really loud, turn the volume down. I got a great haircut, it's not by choice, well, I guess it is by choice now. There's no more supportive group in the world than bald dudes, right? So, but let's be honest. I've been out a little over four years, and I learned a little bit, but I, it hasn't changed who I was as an average Sergeant Major, right? Which is still pretty good. The difference is my network. The difference is people know me. The difference is when I go to places and I introduce myself, like, oh, I heard of you, I follow you. When I talk to clients, they already know who I am, so there's no cold pitches, right? That's why I'm here, because of my network. So uh, today, I want to talk to all of you about the importance of growing your network. And I'm gonna tie it into logistics. So bear with me. So my story real quick, I got out in November 2017, 24 years in the Army. In all honesty, I was planning on doing 32. I was planning on staying in the Army till they kicked me out, there's no E10. Like nobody really could tell me what to do anymore. I loved what I was doing. And I brought the list of assignments home to my former spouse, said, we get first choice. She goes, yeah, I'm not moving. That's it, seven times in nine years, two small kids near her family. So I went from having eight more years to getting out within a year. And like many of you, I had done nothing to prepare. So I went to my first job fair, 
totally prepared, like everything they teach in TAP. I spent six hours talking to 41 employers, handing out business cards, handing resumes, watching them literally circle my clearance and throw it on a pile. Watching them say, check our careers page and apply online if you see anything you like. Thankfully, I think it was employer number 41, I was nagging the recruiter for follow-up information. Like, come on, how do I follow up? How do I get in touch with you? How do we have another conversation? He goes, connect with me on LinkedIn. And so the next day I did. And it just opened the world to me. What I realized is that in that job fair is that I did not have all the information I needed. That nobody was looking to hire someone to lead the operations for 17,000 people in 45 countries. But that was the first bullet on my resume. Tell me when you see that in a job description. That's like being the CEO of LinkedIn, right? I wasn't qualified to do that. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't have people that could help me translate that. And I didn't have people that could open doors to me. Shoot, I didn't even know what companies to apply to. I got on a job, job boards. Has anybody been on job boards yet? Like looking at jobs? Do the Air Force raise hand, right? That's what I learned yesterday, just that. No one wants to do it because you're like, oh, I don't want people to know I'm looking at my transition. But what word do you type in when you search for jobs? Mine started with director, vice president. I'm a sergeant major, right? Chief, whatever. And I got nowhere. So the next day, I got on LinkedIn. And it just changed my life. So one month before my retirement, I started as a director of a workforce management at a small federal IT company. Never heard of it before I was introduced to the CEO by another CEO I met on LinkedIn. Went in for coffee, and he made me a job offer on the spot. I outgrew that job about eight months later. I stayed past a year, because I didn't want to be you know, that metric of service members leaving within a year. And in a year and five days, no kidding, I started as an executive at Ernst & Young. Who's heard of Ernst & Young or EY? Oh, they audit you guys. So, so it's better than just that, right? But let's be honest, 340,000 employees worldwide most of the people I talked to never heard of it. I have a BS degree, literally, BS in liberal arts. How did I get into a bougie consulting firm, big four, as an executive with no consulting experience? Anybody know? Anybody want to guess? Thank you, I didn't have to stomp my foot. Network, I asked a mentor that I met on LinkedIn if they knew anyone at EY that they could connect me to to learn more about the company. They did an email introduction. They were in California. I went in for coffee with the partner, spent 30 minutes with her. She walked me to another port partner. I spent 45 minutes with her. And three days later, I was a final on-site interview. The recruiters, once I got hired, told me I would have never gotten in the firm by applying online. Zero chance. Not with my degree. Not with my experience, not with my resume, that did not look like big four quality experience. I got there because I talked to partners and they saw talent, right? They saw talent and said, we want him on our team. And they said, hire this guy. We don't care. And they literally sent me a link and said, apply to this job, right? I did that for two and a quarter years. I decided I wanted to focus on giving back. And I went full-time to hire military. Our first year, we did over seven figures. Why? Anybody know how? Network, relationships, and trust. People came to us because we built trust. Companies came to us because they knew who we are. And a lot of times, somebody in their organization knew us and trusted us. So it goes way beyond just this networking. And I'm going to tie it to logistics. So let's talk about it now. What makes a good logistician? I'm, I, Is this how the Air Force rolls? Come on, give me really, real, what, in real, not just like, I don't have it on the slide, don't read the slide. What, what really makes a good logistician? Attention to detail, capacity, being patient, <laughs> communication. 
That's much better than being patient. I don't think that works for a logistician. So I will tell you that throughout my career, the thing I valued most about the logisticians that I worked with was that they got poop done. I have a different word I use, but like if I needed a part, if I needed some equipment, if I needed something and we didn't have it on hand, they never came to me and said, ah, we don't have it, right? What did they say? I'll get it. How do they get it? Especially if it's a priority. They know someone, right? Maybe you have to trade something. Maybe you got to promise a future favor. You know, I told my mechanics in, in Afghanistan that I, I would love a vehicle someday. And I kid you not, they showed up within an hour and a half in a vehicle that was not ours. <laughs> Some of you have been there. I'm like, no, I did not say pro, I did not say, they said we secured it for them. They left the keys in it. So we didn't want it to get stolen. Uh, true story, I did have them take it back. Uh, but, you know, what made a logistician stand out was being able to get things done through their network, right? They know someone, they know the other units, they know the organizations. Let's be honest, everybody says, well, they're going to try to sell me something. They also know vendors. It's important to have those relationships. And so when we talk about networking and being here, how many people have this in their hotel room right now? Right? Raise, give me an army hand raise. So not that many. So the rest of you need to start networking. I will tell you, I don't accept business cards. I do literally say, no, I don't want them. Because I don't want that. How many people that raise their hand are going to tell me that they actually will take photos of them and scan them into something? There's always one. Come on. Be honest. Nobody? Does, you do it? You have a book that you put them in, like baseball cards? Wow. I thought the Air Force was really tech. So I assumed somebody was going to say there's an app for that, that they could scan it in, take a photo, it pulls the data and everything else like that. I mean, the Marines do it. I believe there's somebody in here that's doing it, that does it, and doesn't want There you go. There's one. Thank you. It happens. There's more than just you. You're just the brave one. So let's talk about that. Uh, what do you guys do with these? What happens to these business cards for everybody else that doesn't scan them or put them in a book? Trash, right? You have no way to go through these stacks of business cards. I literally had a desk filled with them when I was transitioning, and I literally took the drawer out and was like, because I didn't have the time to go through and see which ones to keep. And so what I want to talk to you today is how to come into the modern ages when it comes to networking how to build your network, how to connect with people, and how to go find the people you want to talk to that you already know through LinkedIn. So let's do it this way. I am going to remember false motivation is better than no motivation. Who knows how to find their QR code? I know you do. I see you on LinkedIn all the time, right? So. Uh, does anybody have, know how to find the QR codes? Well, pull out your phone. Stick with me here. You're going to do this. Everybody pull out their phone. Open up the mobile app if you have it, if you don't pretend you have it, right? Otherwise, I will like, come down there and talk to people. I told them I'm going to come off the stage. I want you to just tap your finger in the search bar. And you'll see a little symbol on the right that's like three squares. If you click that, it's got your QR code. Right? You got to hold it up with your QR code and face me for extra credit. There's an Air Force hold up. But you got me, right? OK, so now I want everyone to stand up. We're not going to do the old E9 stretches before we do a class. I want you to connect with someone near you. Uh, I want you to just turn around to someone near you, and I want you to scan their code and click Connect. And you're going to need this later. And I see a whole section just sitting down. What? Uh, that's a good thing, right? Anybody want to run up so I can scan it? There we go. <laughs> that's like the Zoolander thing. It's in the computer. Oh, there you go. 
We're going to need these later, too. I went directly to this, so I don't have, I don't have my glasses on. Oh, why are you on follow? Why are you on creator mode? It just says follow. Are you on creator mode? All right, hold on. Uh, I'll check it with you later if you want. There we go. Got it. Thank you. Just a hint, you're going to need to, I would pay attention to who you just connected with. You're going to need it later. You could sit down when you're done. Sorry, I, I forgot to tell that. Now I got everybody trained. So what I tell everybody for this event is if you are here, you should be connecting with everyone there. After this event, if you haven't done it, you should walk through the exhibition hall and walk up to each person at each company and like, hey, I'd love to connect with you. Pull out your QR code. And then, I mean, we could have like a thousand people doing it. It would be so much fun. They'd be like, oh my God. But, but at the end of the day, if you go back home and you go click on my network and see your connections, they're in chronological order. So every one of those people, you could send a quick note. You can cut and paste. Great to meet you at LOA 2022. And you'll never be a cold connection again. If you send them a message a year, two years, three years from now, they'll know you met face to face. They'll know you were polite enough to send them a message. And they know you got LOA in common. It should be an easy fix there. So just keep that in mind. So let's talk about why LinkedIn. I'll bet 60% of you in this crowd, and it's a random number, but still, 60% of you are like, I'm not looking for a job. Why do I need LinkedIn? And unfortunately, when people talk about LinkedIn, they talk about it from a job seeker standpoint. Hey, I need to get a profile together because I need some company to fire, find and hire me. And I will tell you, it is so much more. It is not the dumpster fire that Twitter and Facebook have become. And I'm old, so I don't know the other ones. I'll go talk to the gaming guys and find out what those are, right? It's a professional network, but I'll tell you that during COVID, when suddenly there were no more job fairs, right? When suddenly 20, 20 million people were laid off, LinkedIn became really important. And I'll say that the worst time to network is when? When you need a network because it colors everything you do. It makes you, you, like, you, you almost get desperate because there's stress, you've got to find a job, you've got to change something, you need something, and you can't just be comfortable with who you are. So they went from 450 million to 800 million in like two, three years. But I'll tell you that beyond just the job seeker networking piece, as leaders, LinkedIn not only helps you, it helps your organization. So think about this. If you're sharing what you're doing, if you share a day in the life of being in the Air Force, being a logistician, being a maintainer, and you make it look fun, positive, something you enjoy, and people see it over and over and over again, does it influence them? There's a two-star general up at Fort Drum that almost, if I didn't know any better, makes me want to go to Fort Drum. Because every day he's posting a smiling picture with his soldiers, and I'm pretty sure they're being told to smile. But I see it every day, and I'm like, my God, I want to go work for him. But I know what Fort Drum is, and I don't ever want to go there again. But you can see the power of influence there. So you can help with recruiting. You make people want to go to your organization. I remember talking to the uh, US Army Korea commanding general, he's like, we want to make Korea a, you know, a destination of choice. I'm like, I'm a Korean linguist. I get you. You got some work to do, right? So let's get that. Let's get going. So you can help with recruiting. You know, you could help with vendors or clients, right? If you're engaging and telling people what your organization are doing, people are more in tune with what your requirements are. And there's no reason you shouldn't be able to talk. If a contractor talks to them, don't say what I said as a sergeant major. I don't talk to contractors. You're, you're harming your organization. Get smart about what you can and cannot say, but engage, connect, because you never know when it might help. And it also helps you communicate with your team. But I'm going to take it a step further. 
How many leaders do we have in this room? Uh, these are good hands, right? So think about this. There's a lot of senior people in this room. Think about you build a network, you get a profile together with your rank on there, your position, and you write a recommendation for one of your airmen. That carries weight, right? What about if you do a retirement ceremony and you, you post a photo, a smiling photo, and you talk about, you know, Captain Matt Stout, great job he did, I'm not saying he's getting out, but you get where I'm going with this. What did you just do? You just introduced a fantastic officer that you value to your entire network. And as senior leaders, that should include vendors, contractors, big companies, the companies that are over there. So think about it from not just a you, but also supporting your team perspective. And then the last thing I say, you see that see how you buy. Let's be honest, raise your hand if you answer potential spam email, uh, phone calls. You guys get them, right? Anybody? One, are you just doing that? You really answer them? He said yes. There's always one. My buddy actually does the surveys when they call. <laughs> what are you doing? How many people like really keep the direct mail? Like the mailers, like does anybody open them up at all? Like I get the Pella ones and stuff like that, the, the pamphlets with like all the coupons. Does anybody deal with those? <laughs> There's always one. What about the emails? The spam emails that are like start, you know they're gonna sell you something right away. Do you read them? Most people don't. In fact, I talked to the USO, and I love the USO if anybody's here, but the USO is getting most of their donations from mailed in checks. And I said, wow, your donations have been declining now, haven't they? And they're like, how do you know? I'm like, because the people that do that are all dying. <laughs> I hate, I don't wanna be mean, but nobody in this audience is writing a check and in the mail to send it like, right? So you gotta think about that. So we buy from whom we trust for anything. Think about when you wanna go to a new restaurant. Did I tell anybody about the restaurant I, here, the restaurant I went to yesterday? The, the German one, Siegfried's Deli? Anybody go to Siegfried's? Was it amazing? Oh my God, I, I'm going back today. What did I just do? People think well of Siegfried's, right? I'm not trying to sell it, but I just transferred some trust to Siegfried's based on my experience there and sharing it. Think about what makes, who's, how many Apple phone users are, do we have? All right, now put your hands down. How many non-Apple phone users, right? What makes you choose? It's brand loyalty, right? It's trust, or you just don't like the other brand. Still works the same. So you have to understand that relationships and trust are the key to everything, right? And that if you want a job, think, I mean, if you think about it, what is getting a job? You're selling yourself. You're advertising and marketing yourself. And you've got a much better chance if people know who you are. So when we talk about LinkedIn, I'm gonna break it down into three parts. Everybody focuses on part one, the profile. I want to get my profile perfect. I got to put in keywords. I want to make it look perfect, everything else like that. And I'm like, that's the least important part of this. It's the least important. I mean, unless you want to be, if you're a hoper, like I want to get it good enough. Hopefully somebody finds me, tells me what job I can do or what I want to do, you know, that. I'm going to tell you, get your profile good enough that we look at it and it gives you credibility, right? If you post something, I see what role you do, what job you do, what experience you have. Hopefully there's a smiling photo somewhere there so I know you're not like really angry all the time. I was a sergeant major, all my photos had angry looks. So you've got your profile. Then you've got your network. This is important. How many people here have an extensive network outside of the military defense community? <laughs> I know Kevin does. It's probably because of that kangaroo hat you were wearing yesterday. Everybody stands out. but. You get where I'm going. No, I didn't see any other hands going up. So when a job comes open at these major corporations that are not a defense contractor, who thinks of you? When you need to get something done, who do you call? When you need information, how do you open those doors? So you need to intentionally expand your network 
beyond where it currently is in the military bubble, right? We all have reputations. Up here, you all have reputations in the military. I will tell you that you all have reputations outside of the military as well with people with whom you've served. You just got to start connecting with them and sharing so that you can expand it to where you need it. And the last part is what I talk about, engaging. How do you build a relationship if you never talk to someone? Right? If you never talk, if you just nod your head, that's what I call a serial liker. You know, the, the people that just click like all the time. How do you do it? So you've got to engage. So whether you are writing comments, right, which is a conversation, whether you are posting, sharing things, videos, whatever, if you don't engage in conversation, you never build relationships. It's the hardest part for you all to do, and it's the most important, right? You're never going to be thought of for something unless you start telling people who you are. You give them something to connect with. So you've got to have all three. I keep hitting the wrong button. So let's talk about the profile real quick. I want to make it real simple. It should reflect your professional identity, meaning when you meet something, and I, talk, I talked to Captain Stout, I said, what do you do? You know, we did a little quick introduction. He goes, I'm a maintenance officer. I work on, I forget what it was. I'm not Air Force, but there's some kind of plane. And, and, and maybe a jet, I don't know. But, but he said it. I said, well, that should be your headline, right? Nice and simple. It's who you are. And then we talked about a photo. And I tell people, please do not look like a serial killer on your photo. And most of the NCOs look, Air Force is a little better, but... Most of our senior NCOs are what? Like this. I don't know how to smile. Which is a bunch of, it's bogus, right? So I tell people, put something resembling a smile on your face. Don't worry about trying to translate your head headline. Don't be one of those like, I help people or servant leaders or all that other stuff. Just put your job in there for now. Put a little bit of experience in there on there and you don't have to translate anything and just get it to reflect who you are. So that when you reach out to people, they can see that and know they want you to be in their network or they want you in their network, right? And it's okay to put your rank first before your name. The moment I see a rank before a name, I know that I have something in common with them. They're in, I'm a veteran. It makes it easier to say yes. You don't actually have to take pictures, you just go to my profile. So, but you see where I'm going with this. So just get it good enough. If, you, if you're really slick, you can build a, um, you can put a background image up there like that blue one I have. And, and if you are a senior leader, I would just say to the public affairs team, hey, do you got any background images? Right, send me something for the Air Force or for our unit or organization that we could all share. It just adds a little bit of, you know, thought and uh, context to who you are. So you get your profile to reflect who you are. So that's part one. Part two is how you intentionally grow your network. So I ran this search before I got here, and I searched for people that are veterans that went to my college that are in the Salt Lake City area. And you can see it right there. People, Salt Lake City, metropolitan area, past company, all the branches of service, and then Excelsior College. There were 114 people in this area that I could reach out to. So if I was getting out in this area, if I was coming to this area, I would reach out and start connecting with all of them. Hey, I noticed you're a veteran that found success at blah, whatever company it is, and went to Excelsior. Well, I'm an Excelsior alum as well. I'm getting out in six months a year. Love to join your network and maybe get some advice. Bam, nice and simple. Send 114 out. I guarantee you got 20, 25 phone calls. Just like that. And every one of them has an extensive network. So let's do that real quick. I'm, I'm paying attention to my time so I don't go over. I'm going to show you how you can do it real, real simple. And I will blow your mind. Remember, false motivation is better than no motivation. I will stare at you awkwardly until you pull out your phones. So everybody pull out their phone. And what I want you to do, nobody else has to look, type the name of a company, any large company in the search bar. You don't have to call it out so you're not getting in trouble. Click on the company. I think we just broke the internet here. But I just clicked on a company. I just did Google. I don't work for Google, but it's a big one. So you can see it on my page. 
Then I want you to do is I want you to, oh, I, I did it backwards, sorry. <laughs> My bad. So let's start that search over again. I was checking to see when I got that. Just put your finger in the search bar and hit search. Just put your finger in the search bar and hit search. And then I want you to click people. And you should have about 8 million results, right? Does everybody, everybody have that? You just tap the search bar, don't enter anything in there, hit enter, and then hit people. So mine has this little people button here. Now, I want you to scroll across, and where it says current company, click that and add any company. So I'm going to add in, let's do, I'll do it again, I'll do Google. There it is, and show results. So now I have 171,000 people, current company Google on LinkedIn. Now I want you to go across to all filters, and I want you to go down to past company, and I want you to add United States Air Force. and then hit show results. So I right now have 213 Air Force veterans that work at Google. So if you wanted to work at Google, wouldn't that be a great place to start out? Just connecting with them? And you could add other filters. So if I wanted to move to like Boise, Idaho, I could add that location and see what's there. You could do that for any company. And here's your thing. You could also do the same thing for any job. So if you put project manager in there, hit enter, click people, you could add past company United States Air Force, and you get a bunch of Air Force veterans that are project managers. You could add comp current company, you could add locations. This is the valuable thing about LinkedIn. You can't do this on any other platform. This gives you the ability to reach out and have conversations to connect with people that can literally change your life. So I want you to think about this for when you're building out your network. Do you have connections where you need them? And if you want people to think about you for opportunities, your name has to be in the conversation, right? So please take some time to do that. Do not send more than 10 connection requests a day or you will eventually block yourself on LinkedIn, right? So 10 a day is my, is my advice for everybody. So we've got our network. Now let's talk about how LinkedIn works. So the content, who's seen John David's posts on LinkedIn? <laughs> who's been snagged by him for a selfie? Right? So why are we seeing all of his posts? Because we're all clicking on it, and it sends it out to our network. So the way LinkedIn works is what you see in your feed is anything your connections or the people you follow like, comment, share, or post. So if I click like on something, it goes out to my 320,000 followers, right? If any of them click like, it goes out to their connections. And so I'm sure JD is getting tons of connection requests to this event, because he is the, you know, he's got a great hairstyle, number one, and, and he's so personable, but you know, everybody sees him everywhere all these selfies. So I tell people that the most valuable connections for you on LinkedIn are going to be those second or third ripples, right? JD posts something, it goes out to his network of how many? Okay, 2,000 of his closest friends, I actually believe that. Uh, I click like, it goes out to my 320,000. You guys click like, it goes, that, those ripples happen, and the more people see his smiling face, the more people think he's a great guy, and they want to go talk to him. Does anybody not know JD here? Right? You don't know him? <laughs> Networking at its finest. So I want you to think about this. So when you think about social media, when you think about how LinkedIn works, right, it's all about creating touch points. The more I see your smiling face, 
your name, your headline with something that resonates with me, whether it's a post, whether it's a video, whether it's a comment. The more times I see that, each time creates a thread. The more threads, it turns into a rope. It actually starts to build a relationship. I felt like I knew JD before we ever met in person because of the content he shares. He's always smiling, does these gamer things. He told me his master's thesis. If you don't know that, mind changing. But so the idea is that you engage to create impressions, these touch points and build relationships. And so what I typically tell people, if you're gonna do LinkedIn right, and if you're gonna all get spun up on your LinkedIn to build these networks, my advice is get your profile good enough, don't freak out about it being perfect. Send out 10 connection requests a day to where you want them, and at least once a day, five to 10 comments on stuff. And then if you can, two to three times a week a, a picture. It's not that hard, right? Who thinks that's hard? I'm talking about seven, ten, <laughs> why is it hard? What's too, so too many people know me? No, so that's a good question. He says, aren't you out there too much? Are you a spammer? If you're, so you're a spammer for commenting on someone's post? No, not really, right? I know this is, I'm not picking on you. This is a great point. And are you spamming people when you share something in your day, when you highlight a success in the Air Force or your team or the fact that you mountain climb or road bike or what's the other one, CrossFit? You're just sharing a bit of your life. But if you think about it, how do we build relationships in real life, right? You find something in common, you have a conversation, and you, you, it just turns into a relationship, right? So the idea is you should share these things. You should make people want to come to your organization. You should make people want to join the Air Force. You should make people want to join LOA and come to the next one that's in where? St. Louis, I think. So you should make people want to do that by you sharing how much you're passionate about it. And so we're not out there too much. I would argue we're not out there enough right now. I'm not telling you to like go crazy. I'm not telling you to post anything about politics, religion, or vaccines. Like stay away from that as a third rail. But share what makes you excited. Share what you're passionate about. And you will find others. You build a community. And that's what happened for me. Like I am blunt sometimes. I'm direct. I don't have a lot of time for people that just want things handed to them. And some people don't like that. You know what? It's okay. I don't need to be liked by everybody. But I build a community of people that are passionate about the same things I am. And all of you can do the same. So that engagement is a key. You've got to have those conversations. You've got to jump in, right? If you walk out there networking and people are talking and you stand behind them and go like this, does anybody know who you are? But if you go, that's a great point. What happens? They all look at you. They look at your name, they look who you are, and they recognize you. That's a touch point. So that's where the conversation comes in. So, selfie time, right? So who's posted already today besides JD? Seriously, everyone stand up. You know, I, I'm gonna keep you here beyond lunch if you don't do it with me. Stand up and at least pretend to take a selfie with the person that you scanned their QR codes, which is why I didn't tell you it was gonna happen before. Right? I, and I will come down if you came and scanned mine. I scanned yours. Take a selfie. All right. Oh my God, a selfie, taking a selfie. Yeah. Great lighting. Hang on, hang on. I want to get the lower sign. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. There you go. Look at all these smiles. It's so great. Yeah, come on up. Take those selfies. And if you see someone that's sitting around or looks a little awkward, walk up to them and take a selfie with them. I guarantee you to smile, like Kate is standing, sitting there by herself. Oh. Awesome.
Awesome. He's got the right selfie angle and everything. All right, so now, everybody should have at least one selfie. What I want you to do is I want you to open up the mobile app, even if you don't have it, pretend you do. I know you're gonna download it later. I want you to open up the mobile app. I want you to hit the little plus sign down the bottom to post it, and I want you to post that photo. If you remember the name of the pictures with, you can tag them in it. I think everybody here should be young enough to know what a tag is, but you do the at symbol, no space, and start typing their name. But the very important, I don't care if you do nothing, else. Post, add the photo and put in hashtag LOA 2022. Like you can just say LOA 2022 rocks. Good enough, right? Don't ever do two photos. Never do two photos. If you do two photos, it literally squishes them together and cuts people out. You got to do one, three, four, five. I had uh, Lieutenant General Claudia, uh, Lancom Commanding General, took two photos with President Zelensky. And he did them side by side and both photos cut out the Ukrainian president. I'm like, dude, man, I would have never known he was in those photos. I'm like, delete that and just post one of them tomorrow. And he did and it got like 5,000 likes. It went, obviously it went viral, right? So post it and I'm gonna wait a minute. Hold up your phone when you posted. Remember, false motivation. Hold up your phone when you posted or your hand. Some are still doing it. Oh, I see someone taking a selfie now, perfect. Look, at the very least, this is gonna bring you all together. So once you've posted it, this is the exciting part. Open up your mobile app again, and in the search bar, add hashtag LOA 2022. We're gonna create a LOA campaign right now. And you'll see where it says sort by, just below that purple document thing. Change that from top to recent. Go to the hashtag LOA 2022, type that in the search bar. And then you'll see a sort by, just a little bit down from the top. And you wanna have that not be top, you want it to be the most recent. And what you're gonna see is all the pictures that we've posted here today in this workshop should be there. So I want you all to take 53 seconds, maybe two, 51. Anyway, I want you to click like on like 10 or 15 of those pictures. Don't, don't discriminate, like I don't like that person, whatever. Just click like. If you wanna drop a comment, great picture, whatever, do it. But if you think about the ripples that'll come from this, if you think about the fact that how many people are gonna see LOA from these posts and the engagement and content and wish they came, it's mind blowing. So I should be looking at people going like this, not looking at me, right? So as you're clicking away, I mean at the end of the day, I'm gonna tell you that the world really does revolve around relationships. A lot of people say it's who you know. Has anybody heard that? I say it's not who you know, it's who knows you, right? And so realistically, when we talk about the relationships you need to do your job better, the relationships you need for your next career, the relationship you need just to have that community around you so that when you get out, you don't feel like you're alone which is another important thing about our veteran community. What's holding you back? What's keeping you from connecting with the people you need? That would be my question for all of you. There's really nothing. Any questions? Anything at all? I've got 16 seconds. Seriously, no hard questions? We don't have a lot of time for questions. If there's desperation, we can probably make that work, but, sir, what's your booth number? Uh, I, don't, I don't. Does he know it? 106. 106, higher military. I have three questions that I had 
ginned up, ready to go, I'm going to walk over to your booth and I'm going to ask those questions. Okay. And if I'm not there, I'm at Siegfried's Deli. Okay. <laughs> Dead serious. <laughs> Works for me, sir. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much.